This is Turkey, a country at the crossroads of Asia and Europe, home to over 85 million people. Turkey is known for its food, history, and most importantly, barbers. The country is blessed with a rich cultural heritage, including many diverse peoples and landscapes, making it the sixth most visited country in the world. Ever since the inception of the Turkish Republic in 1923, its leaders have looked to huge pioneering mega-projects to drive the economy. These have included the new Istanbul Airport, which is now the busiest airport in Europe, and the Güney Doğu Anadolu Projesi Gap, or its English name, the Southeastern Anatolia Project, is one of the most ambitious projects ever undertaken in the Middle East, in total costing $32 billion and comprising of 22 dams, 19 power plants and 13 irrigation and hydropower schemes built. The project intends to harness the Euphrates and Tigris rivers in order to develop the agricultural and energy sectors in southeastern Anatolia. GAP spans across nine provinces and covers over nine million people with construction beginning in the 1970s. Its vision is to spur economic development, lower inequalities, as well as improve food and energy security. However, as with all mega-projects, the plans are highly controversial, with critics pointing to the displacement of people, floods and geopolitical tensions created by GAP. So why Southeastern Anatolia? Southeastern Anatolia is the poorest region in Turkey. In 2001, between 21.8% to 44.7% of households across the region lived below the poverty line. The economy is primarily based on subsistence agriculture and the people have poor access to healthcare and education. Unemployment is rampant, thus many young adults are forced to move out into urban centers in western Turkey to find better opportunities. This leaves the area with an unbalanced dependent population of youths and elders as well as putting vast population and service pressures on western Turkey's cities. Despite the circumstances, the region has vast potential for development. Being home to the sources of the Euphrates and Tigris rivers provides the conditions for an agricultural and energy boom. The region contains up to 28% of the country's water resources and 20% of the total irrigatable farmland. Upon completion, GAP is expected to provide 25% of Turkey's electricity, producing 27 billion kilowatt hours annually, and providing irrigation to 1.8 million hectares of arable land. Once fully operational, GAP is expected to double Turkey's hydroelectric production, increase irrigated areas by 50%, more than double the per capita income in the region, more than quadruple GNP, and create at least 2 million new jobs. Farmers in the region will benefit from readily available water and cheap energy, and thus crop yields are to increase. The Department of Agriculture has encouraged the cultivation of water-intensive cash crops, such as Turkish cotton, which allows farmers to make higher incomes. Cotton production in the Haran Plain alone increased 150%, making Turkey the 8th largest producer of cotton in the world. This also improves food security and provides more export income. Exporting allows farmers to earn foreign currency, which can then be used to import modern capital and inputs, such as tractors and high-grade fertilizer, to boost productivity and crop yields further. In 2002, the exports from the region totaled $689 million, increasing to $8.8 .8 billion in 2015. The construction of dams will also see a sizable improvement in water and energy security. Due to rapid industrialization and population growth, Turkey has the fastest growing energy demand amongst all OECD countries and has a 74% import dependency to meet energy demand. The country spends around $40 billion a year on energy import. Thus, developing hydropower reduces the need for energy imports and the possibility of supply-side shocks 
as seen across Europe in the fallout from the war in Ukraine. The reservoirs also provide water for domestic purposes in a country challenged by water stress. Furthermore, lower imports will help lower the current account deficit, which could lead to increased investment in the domestic economy. Developing renewable energy sources such as HEP will also help the environment by lowering pollution and slowing the advent of climate change. Currently, around two-thirds of Turkey's energy mix derives from fossil fuels. GAP will also help lower regional economic inequalities across Turkey. The economy of southeastern Anatolia is expected to grow by 400%. The scheme also provides investment to various sub-projects across education, healthcare and infrastructure. New roads and six airports have been built, improving accessibility and reducing travel times. Between 2007 to 2015, 32 new hospitals were built and six new universities opened, improving people's living standards. In 2002, there were only 1,102 commercial establishments in the region, employing around 39,000 people. As of the end of 2015, there were over 3,600 commercial firms providing jobs to 190,000 people. Economic free zones have also been established in Mardin and Gaziantep. These zones offer generous tax advantages and less red tape to producers, helping facilitate international trade. This helps attract businesses and creates more jobs. Many agro-based businesses have sprung up in the region with industries such as textiles and food processing. But what are the geopolitics behind GAP? Water is essential for life. As such, building dams and taking more water from the source of the Euphrates Tigris Basin was bound to cause tensions with Turkey's southern neighbours. Both Iraq and Syria claim the project violates the UN Water Courses Convention, which Turkey never signed, and puts them in an existential crisis. The Ilisu Dam in Turkey itself has decreased the discharge of the Tigris from 20.5 billion cubic metres to 9.7 billion cubic meters of water. This has increased salination of Iraq's land, reducing the amount of farmland. Agriculture employs one third of Iraqis and thus salination created mass unemployment and displaced many people from their homes. Consequently, Iraq is at risk of severe food and water insecurity. Although Iraq has engaged with talks with Turkey in an attempt for the latter to release more water downstream, former President Barham Sali still estimates that Iraq might face a water deficit of 10.8 billion cubic meters of water annually by 2035. Water scarcity has also led to tribal conflicts in Iraq between various ethnic groups. In retaliation for the construction of the Ataturk Dam, Syria has previously hosted and trained Kurdish PKK terrorists within their own territory who have been engaged in a war against Turkey since the 1970s. Syria used its support for the group as leverage in bilateral talks on water. In 1987, Turkey and Syria signed the Protocol of Economic Cooperation. In return for more water from Turkey, Syria agreed to stop supporting the PKK. The PKK on numerous occasions have targeted GAP damaging several dams and killing engineers working on the project. This war has claimed the lives of tens of thousands of people. Moreover, despite their protests, Syria has built the Takbar Dam along its own section of the Euphrates to develop irrigation there. The construction of the Takbar Dam almost brought Syria and Iraq to war, with both sides gathering soldiers on their shared border. Iraq claimed the dam would disrupt the lives of 3 million Iraqi farmers and threatened to bomb the dam. In 1992, former Turkish President Suleyman Demiral remarked, Neither Syria or Iraq can lay claim to Turkey's rivers any more than Ankara could claim their oil. This is a matter of sovereignty. We have a right to do anything we like. The amount of people displaced by the GAP project downstream could backfire on Turkey. The country is in the midst of a refugee crisis and has become a popular destination where migrants try to enter Europe. Turkey hosts the world's largest refugee population, totaling over 3.7 million according to the UN Refugee Agency. Public opinion is becoming increasingly dissatisfied with the large volume of migrants as the country is still grappling with an inflation and currency crisis and the fallout from the 2023 earthquake. Subsequently, water insecurity in Iraq and Syria could further destabilize the region and unleash an even greater exodus of refugees 
pushing Turkey to a breaking point. What are some environmental and cultural questions raised by GAP? GAP has been criticized for its negative impacts on the local environment and cultural heritage. Over 70% of the region is at risk of severe soil erosion due to a lack of vegetation. This will reduce the amount of available farmland. Sedimentation in reservoirs is also a major problem. This not only increases the risk of flooding, but also reduces water storage and energy production in dams. In response, the Ministry of Environment have launched a campaign to restore forests and farmland in the Euphrates Tigris Basin. GAP is estimated to displace over 350,000 people. The construction of the Ilisu Dam alone displaced 78,000 people from their homes and demolished many archaeological sites such as the ancient city of Hassan Kaif, which had been inhabited since the Neolithic times, once home to a myriad of cultures. Many see this as an act of cultural erosion by destroying cultural heritage sites. In the end, the government relocated many important monuments to a new archaeological park, ensuring their preservation. They also worked with archaeologists to salvage any artifacts and preserve them in local museums. Most of the displaced people were ethnic Kurds. Some groups have accused the Turkish government of using GAP as part of various assimilation and repressive policies to break up the Kurdish community. Local protests over the Ilisu Dam saw some initial success, forcing some countries to withdraw their funding and a case even reaching the European Court of Human Rights. But these efforts all failed as Turkish banks simply stepped in to fill the funding void and the court case was thrown out. Nevertheless, the government argues GAP is there to serve the local people and promote peace as increased economic prosperity lowers the support for terrorism. The benefits and drawbacks of GAP are multifaceted, with various competing interests between different players. Due to climate change and population growth, water is increasingly becoming a scarce commodity and may therefore create conflicts. As such, Turkey should ensure that the new energy supply should be invested in developments that increase economic prosperity and the living standards of its citizens. The country should prioritize sustainable development at the heart of GAP to avoid damaging the aspirations of future generations. It must also strike a balance between its neighbors and the minority groups within to bring long lasting peace in the region. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please feel free to leave a thumbs up and a comment. Don't forget to subscribe for more engaging content. As always, we appreciate your support and we'll see you in the next video. Until then, gulay gulay.